And namaste, 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 everybody. Bruce here from rootsoflife.org. In this video, I want to go into an idea on or a discussion on the, uh, the benefits, as it were, of chanting. In our Reiki practice, for instance, maybe some of you have been chanting the symbols or maybe the precepts. And there's a really beautiful reason in my opinion anyways, as to why this is such a beautiful practice. You know, one of the ideas of chanting the symbols, for instance, is there's a number. You chant, you know, chokure, for instance, 10,000 times. Well, why 10,000 times? Because as we chant, right, we have a meaning in our mind about the chant, okay? And if we chant enough, the meaning goes away. The understanding of it goes away. We go into a trance, right? Many of you may have done this when I know I did this when I was a kid. I used to say my name over and over and over again until it lost meaning. And it would just be like, Bruce, what Bruce doesn't mean anything. I don't understand what that even is. There's a beauty in that. Okay. And the beauty is this. When we get into that space and we begin maybe by bowing and gashau. Okay. And I'm going to chant maybe the, the Amitabha Buddha Sutra or the, you know, the symbols, or the precepts, or maybe the prayers in Ashtanga Yoga, or whatever it might be, maybe the prayers in your own religious practice, or your spiritual practice, whatever it might be, we're turning into the parasympathetic nervous system by doing this, the rest and restore state. And by doing so, we're activating the vagus nerve, right? And that vagus nerve is like a one way, not one way, excuse me, but it's a singular line of communication to all of the organs in the body, all of the systems in the body. Without getting too deep into this for the sake of the video, just to see the vagus nerve as being one street that has connections to all the systems of the body, right? Another way that I like to put it is imagine you are having a call, like a Zoom call, with all of the systems of your body. Well, the vagus nerve is like having all of them at that same table because it's one space of communication where everything can communicate via a common thread or a common nerve. That's in the parasympathetic nervous system. So in the automatic or the sympathetic state, we don't have as facilitated of a conversation. It's more like the brain communicates with this organ and then with this organ and with this space and with that system and this system, all of these kind of singular responses. Right, And so it's a little bit less efficient, which makes sense from an automatic state, because if it's less efficient, we don't want necessarily our food to digest if we're trying to run away from something that's attacking us. All the attention is put into the muscles, less into the digestion. In the parasympathetic, the rest and restore state, well, we have everything at the same table. right? And so here's the beauty of this. If everything is at the same table, and we're chanting via the throat, obviously, right? Which is the, the top of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is kind of at the brainstem, the back of the throat. Well, then what are we doing? We have everything at the same table connected via this one nerve. And we're chanting the understanding of a precept or a sutra or a prayer, which is most likely going to be about love or kindness or stillness or peace, tranquility, right? a connection to God, a connection to the universe. So imagine we have everything at the same table and we're chanting chokure over and over and over and over again until it loses meaning. What does it mean when it loses meaning? Well, it means that the mind has superseded the idea of the meaning of chokure and it's sent then that meaning of chokure throughout every aspect of the body. So without getting too deep into the meaning of the symbols, because you know maybe some of you are listening and you're brand new to Reiki and you haven't studied them yet, just suffice it to say that Chokure is about an awareness of the body, okay? an awareness of the resistance within the body. And so if we can have this idea, imagine, so instead of Chokure, if you've never heard of this before, imagine that you are chanting, I am aware of any resistance in my body and I let go of it. You chant that over and over and over again, it's going to be way more efficient if you can chant that via the vagus nerve, and it goes into all systems of the body at the same time. So any pockets of resistance can be released and let go of, right? We can dive into the, the totality of the body and rest and restore. 
And not only are we doing that from the parasympathetic state, but we're also adding this beautiful narrative on top of not only am I resting and restoring, but I'm also doing that from the space of the meaning of this sutra, the kindness, the love, the balance. I'm allowing that to saturate my whole being. So think about that the next time that you chant or pray or meditate, whatever. Maybe the next time you're in your yoga practice and you do ujjayi breath, right? If you are familiar with that, it's when you vibrate the back of the throat when you're doing your asana. And the idea here is, again, to drive the meaning of the asana through the body. From a yogic perspective, the meaning of yoga is not about how well you can do a pose or how deep you can go into a pose or how good you look in the pose or any of that stuff. That's just ego. The meaning of getting into that space of yoga is to allow the body to open up, to release that resistance so you can become the union, which is what yoga means, the union of the mind and the body. And the union of the mind and the body means the lack of separation between those two or the lack of the illusion of the separation. And so when that separation is gone and we can see beyond it, then the energy just flows through our whole system without resistance. That's the idea, right? And so we can cultivate that by working on the throat, by working on you know, the vagus nerve in the parasympathetic state, by chanting until it loses its meaning and just feeling into that practice. So I'd encourage all of you, if you're a Reiki practitioner, to bow in Gashao and chant the symbols deep in the back of the throat. If you're a Christian or a Buddhist or you're practicing some sort of religious practice, right, in prayer, pray deeply in the back of the throat. Really let it vibrate in the back of the throat. Feel that response. If you are not a Reiki practitioner, you're not religious, none of that stuff resonates with you, that's fine. Get relaxed. Become aware of the whole body and simply say, I love you in the back of the throat. Let, the, let it be guttural. Let it really vibrate through the body. You'll feel the response. This is how we heal, right? So I hope that helps everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion on how we can get into, you know, kind of the vagus nerve space, into that awareness of chanting, of prayer, of ujjayi breath. Thanks, everybody. Namaste in Gashau. Be well.